Ahmedabad in recent years has been on the cultural map of uh, the world. The heritage could be of two types. One is the tangible heritage. Ahmedabad's architecture, the ancient architecture, sculpture, paintings, you know, all this we can see, we can touch and be proud of. But often, the intangible heritage that is handed down to us by stalwarts is uh, forgotten. For example, right now we have been at the Darpana Academy of Performing Arts, actually at the portals of that uh, academy. More than 70 years ago, with a vision, this academy was set up by Vikram Sarabhai and Mrinanini Sarabhai. As if Mrinanini Ben brought Bharatanatyam to Ahmedabad as a dowry. And for 70 years, you know, there have been several milestones. So we today are going to look back to the heritage that is that has come to us in Ahmedabad through Bharatanatyam, through Mrinanini Sarabhai. After talking about that beautiful heritage, we would also take the opportunity to talk with Mallika Ben, who has a new vision. So we look back to the tradition and also we look forward to the vision through Mallika Ben's eyes. That's what we are going to do today. In her autobiography, Mrinanini Ben mentions a dinner at her house where a close relative made an observation. She was just a child, just a kid. And uh, he said, Mrinanal is going to become the beauty of the family. Now, beauty manifests itself in many ways. Uh, though you are her daughter, perhaps, you know, you can explain what is meant by beauty in the coming years? I think that particular comment referred to physical beauty. You see, Amma was, in those terms, a skinny and dark child. Hmm. Her older sister was the epitome of the Ra Ravi Shank uh, Raja Ravi Verma beauty. I see. You know, fair and round. That was considered beautiful. Mm -hmm. Till quite recently in India, fair and round. Fair is still considered beautiful. Right. And I think it was in that context because Amma then and till she died did not feel beautiful. And yet she was chosen by Vogue magazine as one of the ten beauties of the world. She was amazingly beautiful but that childhood memory of being told you are ugly you are dark never actually went away right her beauty as a person added to that hmm. and when she went on stage it was like a light bulb got switched in inside and she glowed yes that was yet another beauty it was a sort of spiritual beauty coming out. So there were many forms, but I think that particular comment was about mm, the physical. Mm. And she had a sweet voice. She had a I lovely always voice. Loved to listen lovely to Lovely voice, lovely diction. Mm. And for her, the sound of words was always very, very important. Yes. How, I think, you know, like people enjoy food in the mouth and you savor food. Savor? I think she savored words. Mm -hmm. Mm. Right. And she had the sense for the diction. Very much. The right word at the very right much, place. Very much. Mm. And she wrote and so very much. Precise. She wrote so much that she, she loved words. And we used to both share this uh, love for finding out where this word comes from, the etymology. Mm. And mm. she would come to me very excited and say, Do you know that the word navel comes from the Sanskrit nav? Oh. Or that sugar comes from yeah. sakkar. <laughs> And you know, so we used to have this, both of us had this love for words that we shared. Right, right. So apart from her being a beautiful person, in a different sense, as you say, uh, to me, she has always appeared to be a complete person, a complete individual, perhaps uh, one of the finest pieces of uh, mankind. 
often, you know, I have been with her, sitting, you know, in the last row, watching the Natrani performance. Often I have been in the office, though the mementos were a distraction, because, you know, <laughs> sometimes some of them were dainty, some of them were the large sized, including the beautiful photograph with uh, Pandit Nehru, right. you know. But then, you know, there were moments when I felt that, well, she has been a complete person. So what were the forces that shaped her as a complete human being? I think she suffered a lot as a child. She was never close to her mother. She was very close to her father. She huh. felt that the father was the only one who believed that she had talent, that she would do something special. And then she lost her father very suddenly at the age of 11. Right. Then she met Papa, she got married, came to Ahmedabad in 1942. And within one month, the Quit India movement had started. And she and Papa had gone to watch my aunt Mridula lead a procession. You're right. And Papa had a camera in his hand. And a policeman on the other side saw the glint of the lens, thought it was a gun, and lobbed a grenade which burst in Amma's eye. So for one year, Amma was bandaged at the beginning of her career and didn't know if she would be disfigured for life, if she would ever dance again, if she would be blind for life. Mm -hmm. And I think these are the things that really shaped her. There was a, in spite of having a family that adored her and was always around her, that all of us decided to settle with her. There was an aloneness about her. There was a loneliness, not an aloneness. There was a loneliness about her. But a solitude. A solitude and a loneliness. Uh, 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 and she would share that loneliness. I think I was the only one who could breach it. Because I don't think ever in her life for one instant did she doubt my total love and commitment for her. Not when I got married, not when I had children, not when I went away for the Mahabharata. She knew that she was in many senses the center for me. Rather like Ganesha going round and round Parvati and saying, this is my world. Uh, but I think all of those factors, she was very compassionate. She felt very deeply when she saw suffering, because of her own suffering perhaps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So whether it was going off to the Muslim camps to personally distribute food and blankets, I see. or calling all the children from Usmanpura and for one month teaching them in the summer, how to move, how to dance, how to... Or, for instance, going out into the tribal villages and sitting with the tribal women, mm. uh, giving them the skills and the self-confidence to be able to develop those skills and then taking them into Gurjari, oh. where she was chairperson. Oh. Right. And she was an aesthete. For her, beauty didn't only mean one thing. If there was a leaf, then she saw the beauty in that and she would point it out and and or if if there was a woman walking on the horizon she would look at that beauty you know so her eye was the eye of an aesthete and i think that was very much reflected in all her That's work true. yeah yeah and when you mentioned the leaf of a tree i also recall that uh, she had formed friends, uh, of, the friends trees. of the tree long before anybody was concerned about the environment <laughs> she was concerned about trees being cut that's down. True. That, that, that's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. And uh, I also remember that at the condolence prayer meeting, you know, I saw many unprivileged women Absolutely. coming and, you know, in reverence, you know, bowing yeah. to Absolutely. her. Absolutely. And I will spoke to you that yeah. this aspect is very yeah. important. Yeah. Right. Yes, sir. Uh, she brought uh, Bharatanatyam to Ahmedabad. Certainly did. And uh, you would like, she used to mention it very often, and you might also uh, like to mention those days, you know, when uh, uh, dance was looked down upon. But apart from that, uh, I often heard her say that uh, uh, the dance, the classical dance, particularly Bharatanatyam dance, is like the catapult. You know, we draw back and then we Go think forward. of moving Absolutely. forward. Mm. Absolutely. So that, I think, very, very beautifully, you know, the, the whole vision was expressed there. Yeah. I think she believed very strongly in being rooted 
but being rooted not to say ah these are my roots these are my roots huh, huh. but to give the strength for trees like these yes. to grow whichever way to be able to go here and there and there and there and you know that was for her what the rootedness was for mm -hmm. so like the catapult pulling back to go forward the aim is not to pull back yeah the aim is not regressive the aim right. is not to go into history to give the to, momentum to take forward. the strength from the history to be able to create right and i think that is very much something she has taught us hmm right that history is not static history hmm. is not unchangeable tradition is not unchangeable hmm yes. you make tradition right and she always remain she was an artist but you know she didn't believe in art for art's sake Absolutely. but she was a vibrant part of the surrounding the social Absolutely. surrounding i think she and was part of the nation building at a time when the nation was first coming into being a into nation being. yes and i think that's a very important part because today artists themselves but also audiences see arts as so far removed from anything else you know it's like the cherry on the cake and i keep saying no the arts are the yeast that makes the cake rise hmm. and one of the things we are trying to do with natrani is to get children out of the virtual world into the magic of real performance right. into the magic of what happens as a rasa it can't happen on youtube rasa hmm. can only be generated if i am looking directly and into the eyes of my audience and saying something to them hmm. and that is a joy we are trying to recreate at natrani for young people as much as for older people right huh? and uh, it sounds incredible today that many years ago perhaps initially you know she thought of the production called uh, the hedge yes absolutely hmm. it was called memory is a ragged fragment of eternity right 1963 when she was learning how to read gujarati her teacher used to make her read the newspapers and she kept on reading of these reports of girls from saurashtra jumping into a well and then jayanti dalal and yashwan thakkar explained to her the whole dowry issue in gujarat hmm. and she was so horrified that she created that piece hmm. and it was the first time in bharatanatyam that the bowls the shollars were used as an emotion and not language as we know it hmm. so that anybody can understand tadinge na to tadinge na to but if i say it in tamil you may not understand it mm. but giving emotion to the bowls of the mridangam right was a radical departure mm. also bringing into a dance of shingara the possibility of violence and hatred was a radical departure that's right yeah and then i think uh, production after production right. till the last yes i also recall to mind the mahabharata that, that was this created. mahabharata yeah. this mahabharata yeah paralleling what is happening exactly. today exactly so directly related to the contemporary world mm. uh, <clears throat> it comes to mind that uh, amma was a uh, fond of krishna yes I, uh, she has written that beautiful prose poem kan fondly she presented to me a copy of it okay uh, also translated into gujarati. gujarati i read it and at the same time i also recall the production on krishna beautifully done yeah. you know and uh, sometimes you know she used to say that when i had to take an important decision i used to talk to krishna i talked to i used to talk to krishna she had a very very intimate relationship with krishna very it was partly maternal partly lover partly gopika friend <laughs> i it was it was a lot of things and she always she used to tell me that also that you know i i ask krishna what i should do mm -hmm. and he always tells me right so i think there is no end to <laughs> conversations uh, talk, about talk, her talking about True. her this yes, right. side we'll soon talk about your vision in public that uh, my personal enrichment has been in a major way through darpana academy and the two persons i know them <laughs> know there uh, so that's how and then uh, many other memories also come to mind as far as you as a person <laughs> uh, uh, concerned because you gave a new dimension to what i am watching there <laughs> Malika Ben it has always been a privilege and pleasure coming to Darpana and going to Natrani I 
recall the images, you know, as I enter, I see on the left, Amma sitting uh, erect, you know, uh, and uh, with her eyes, you know, she would welcome me with a smile. And then I go down and take my usual seat. I take in the new air and the new space of uh, Natrani. Uh, there's a complete metamorphosis. What prompted you to go into this uh, complete change of Natrani? You know that the reason we were forced to shut down was because the riverfront cut into so much of our land and half the stage disappeared. Mm -hmm. And then you personally know of my commitment to environmental friendliness and into being green. And I thought that if we were rebuilding it, then we needed to make a statement architecturally as well as, uh, as performance-wise and state-wise. Right. So I decided to build it as a green art space. Oh. So every brick is recycled. Underneath the stage, there is a rainwater harvesting tank, which takes water, cools it, and runs it under where we are sitting. Behind me, there are vents, right. which a machine takes air from the atmosphere, cools it, and all through the performance, pushes fresh air into the auditorium, mm -hmm. so that it's never still. Uh, we have used only lime plaster and lime as you know is something that is very earth friendly because it dissolves back into usable lime unlike cement. So we have tried in every which way to make it a fabulous looking theatre but that is green to make people understand that you can mm. have a technologically very advanced, visually very advanced looking thing but build with traditional materials mm -hmm. and I think that was the vision. Right and uh, I think the very process, even the architectural process, keeps uh, inbuilt into Natrani the memories of uh, Darpana. Absolutely. The architects Uday and Moshmi Andhare were frequent visitors at Natrani. Yes. And they wanted to keep that same spirit. Hmm. Uh, and I think they have, they have succeeded mm -hmm. because it's completely different, but it is Natrani, it's not something else. <laughs> But uh, certain, some, some material, I was told earlier, has been uh, used in building this up. Every single brick that we broke from Natrani and the library, Bibi Doshi's library, which we also oh. had to break, every single one was crumbled and remade into every a Every single brick, every brick single of one. So each of these bricks has seen 70 years of sweat, tears, mm. jubilation and the arts. That, that is really a creative uh, process in building and, and very important I believe very much in places having a vibration so that you go, go into some places and you instantly feel calm and positive yes. and you go into other places and you don't know why but you feel terrible hmm. there is a sort of darkness that settles onto you hmm. and I wanted Natrani to be a place filled with joy and spirituality and Janjar no Rankar. Janjar no Rankar. Uh -huh. And that's why, you know, at the first performance, many of my friends said, you know, that we feel the presence of uh, Amma in the very air of it. Yes, it you is. Know, it's very it much is, It's very much there and it was a very conscious decision to do that. Done. I see. Uh, apart from the new face that is given to Natrani, perhaps, you know, the Darp Pana approach would also change. Yes. So, what is your vision for Darpana? Let us say, I think what after, we after said, 10 years, what, it, what would it be like? I want to do two or three different things. I want to concentrate on creating collaborative performances that can have a long life, that I can see. travel the world. I want to make this into a throbbing center of the arts so that we have resident artists who can come, stay five months, six months, work with us, create a major piece of work. Mm -hmm. We showcase it here, we showcase it to the world. Natrani itself has to become a place where every art lover in India has to come to it. It must become a Mecca. People traveling from the world of arts anywhere, coming to India, must head to Natrani. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of place I want to be. 
you know, Ahmedabad getting a cultural heritage tag, what does it mean? Culture is not only in buildings. Culture, living culture is the arts. True. Whether it's performance or it's visual arts. And that is the centre. You know, with the building of Natrani, we now have the plaza where we were sitting. Uh, the plaza becomes another performance area. We have the gallery which we will open in four or six weeks. The gallery, the Manali Sarabhai gallery which will celebrate Amma's centenary this year is also created as an interactive venue where you can have conferences, you can have meetings, you can have performances, you can have projections, you know, whatever you want. So with this, we are giving Ahmedabad a huge new canvas of spaces to create with and that's what I want us to become. I mm -hmm. want us to become the magnet that pulls arts and art right. lovers from mm -hmm. everywhere. And in the past I have seen that many performers, uh, young or old, you know, I have seen tears in their eyes performing on this stage. Yeah. They said, you know, that this is a privilege and what a lovely stage. And I want that to have not gone up ten notches. And yes. the kind of oh. things we are calling to Natrani, we have amazing international artists. We started the Sunday to Sunday festival on the 30th of September and I personally watched 120 plays before selecting the eight that we are presenting. You know, we started off by looking at other people's reviews, audience reviews and narrowed it down to 20. Then I said, I have to look at these 20. And there was so much rubbish there. And I thought, I can't believe anybody else's reviews. I have to personally watch them. So it's taken me the better part of five months of watching a lot of crap that you gets reviewed in magnificent <laughs> terms and then coming to the place that we are presenting. Uh -huh. And like that, I have been viewing the best of dance from across the country and the world, the best of theatre from across the country and the world. For instance, for the Vikram Sarabhai festival this year hey, in December, instead of three days, we are having a five-day festival and we are calling it We Women. And I, I am getting award-winning plays from Britain, Australia, America and here. Quite exciting. I'm creating a new piece. And these are plays, for instance, there's a director called Henry Naylor, in a, a script writer come director from England, who has been, who is touted as being the genius of the last 30 years of theatre. Mm -hmm. And his plays, two of his plays are coming to the festival, have won over 30 awards each. Mm -hmm. We have Sita Patel coming, she's a Bharatanatyam dancer from London, who has collaborated with a brilliant woman from Australia. She is bringing a piece which has won every award in the festivals. Mm -hmm. You know, so the, we have pushed up the notch of what we are presenting at Natrani. I mean, if this is the spectacle we have built, then right, the spectacles right. that we will show have mm -hmm. to be of that notch. When you, when you, when you say that, well, uh, uh, Natrani now or the or performances would be 10 notches, notches up. higher. And when you say that, well, you saw 120 productions before, before uh, selecting, selecting this lot. This lot. Uh, so, uh, you have an amazing creative power. There is no formality, <laughs> but if you are doing so much of work and remain smiling and cheerful, you <laughs> amazing. Uh, of course, now uh, uh, Chandran has uh, been in support. Yadavan has been a Yadavan huge, been. huge person in partnering me in seeing that this theatre will remain an advanced theatre for the next 20 years. Mm. As artistic director of Darpana, his vision plays as much a part in what you see and what you will be seeing. And I have to say that it's a, it's a very exciting and challenging um, yatra to work yatra, with Yadavan. Yes. It is a yatra mm -hmm. and it, it, is, uh, it is very challenging to work with him because he will not take 99% of anything. And at the same time, he keeps a very low profile. He keeps an extremely low profile. He doesn't seek profile. publicity. <laughs> uh, uh, he appears shy, actually, you know. He is. He's very embarrassed every time I call yeah. him on stage. Yeah, exactly. I've seen that. And at the Vikram Sarabhai festival, when it was uh, only for three years, I have seen international guests. Yes, absolutely. You know, some of them sitting by the side of Amma as well. Yeah, coming every year for a them. biographer of uh, Amma. That's right. You know. Rodney Linton. Rolf, yes. Rolf Linton flew. He's 94 and has seen at least 25 of the Vikram Sarabhai festivals in the last 40 years. Uh -huh. And he flew for the opening. He oh. changed his ah, date. I think I, I noticed you saw him sitting, sitting there. there. Yes, he changed his entire December plan to September because he wanted to be part of this. How and he's 94 how, years how old. How they love Darpana <laughs> they and indeed. the memories of Amma. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that, that's true. Uh, <clears throat> you mentioned uh, the stamps being made by artists. Yes. You know, 
uh, as the as the tickets you know or the passport I, huh? I have always been uh, bothered by the fact that performing arts is seen as one silo and visual arts is seen mm. as another silo That's true. so if you remember in 2011 when we did Kadak for the first time we had 600 not out as the thing and in the garden opposite Darpana, we had 20 artists painting, painting. to the poems yeah, that were being yes. re uh, recited on the city of Ahmedabad. Mm -hmm. So this time, you know, our membership is not a membership card. We are giving each member a passport. And they will get a passport to the world of arts and arts of the world. Mm -hmm. And they will then decide how many visas they want. Do they want 41 visas, which is the world traveller? Or do they want to be a smart tripper where they can choose between five and nine visas? Or do they want to be a backpacker, which is the student visa, where again you can choose between five and nine visas? Mm -hmm. Each visa is a performance. Okay. And for each of those, we have gone to a visual artist in Ahmedabad. We have taken, for instance, for Mother River, I went and spoke about the performance to Amitambalal. And he created the stamp, stamp yes. which will become the visa in the passport. Uh -huh. So at the end of the year, you can look at your passport and you will know which countries and which parts of India you have traveled in. Mm -hmm. And that will become something you keep because it will have original pieces of art created for that performance as your visa. Mm -hmm. So this uh, works in two ways. First the involvement of the fine artists absolutely you know, and with the, the performing artists. and the fact that the performing artists will see fine art fine art. exactly so it's a beautiful collaboration yeah. between the two arts we are very which excited. are normally separated so we are very that, excited that, that, by that that would be really yeah. wonderful um, what new kind of excitement do we look forward to as far as the performances at um, natrani well, are concerned Already in November, um, we have the Karana festival, which is a festival of choreographed classical dance. I so see. large groups. And we have Seema Biswa, Shama Bhate and Vanashri Rao coming with big pieces. Then in December, of course, we have We Women. And we have a contemporary dance festival called Rerooted. Uh, oh. in February. Okay. In January we have Cinema of Resistance Festival, we have the Festival of Nonviolence Through the Arts and we are launching, relaunching our talk series called Detox. If you remember four years ago we had had four or five of these and we are relaunching it and we have people like Shashi Tharoor, Saeed huh. Mirza, Vandana Shiva all coming every second Wednesday to give the opposite of TED Talks. TED Talks, you have to sankshit kubudu karu pade, adhar minit nu hoi itle. But this especially is to go into details and to be able to listen to the country's foremost public intellectuals across the board and to be able to interact with them. Hmm. Because I think Ahmedabad requires that oxygen. So we are launching that as well. So on top mm. of all the arts, we are having that. Right. I think that would uh, cultivate taste for Ahmedabad. And I think today's young people can't live a life on their phones. Interacting with intellectuals, being able to ask, for instance, Saeed Mirza as a young filmmaker, if I can talk to Saeed Mirza, at one time Saeed Mirza had 40 young people around him. What was it that made his Albert Pinto? What was it that made uh, the other film about Gussa Kyo Aata Hai? Albert Pinto ko Gussa Kyo Aata Hai. What was that anger? Why did he stop making films? That for, for me is a very important decision when a hugely creative filmmaker says, this is not how I want to make films and this is not where I will make films. Mm -hmm. Why? What was that ethical point that set him apart? And why are we not talking ethics? When Vandana Shiva goes and says, I am trying to regrow the native grains of this country in a time when Monsanto is winning, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. there, are, there were also fascinating uh, literary events. Yes. And, and, uh, and uh, beautiful films. Uh, All of that is going to happen. Shamiana is coming back. Shami, okay. Shami, and in the literary events, we are going to start probably something like Madhyantar so that that conversation can happen. But also in our detox, we are getting major writers to okay. come and talk about their work. People who are not known as well or people uh -huh. who are not known in Gujarat. 
people i mean mangai extraordinary woman writer director yes. from tamil nadu she is coming next month to oh, talk wonderful. she is a staunch feminist who uses theater to talk of feminism to talk of gender equality we need to know about these people mm -hmm. it's not only people we know but it's the people we need to know mm -hmm. whose work we need to know those are also coming i, I wish that the art lovers of ahmedabad would take uh, take this as an opportunity i hope so too mm -hmm. i hope so because because this is what stimulates the mind that's right yeah and you know you can hear one word and it can start an entire thought process that can lead to a new creation then we have no time left you know for time and energy left for uh, the that division absolutely. and violence absolutely yes, absolutely uh, we we are also going to have a special lab, uh, a gallery we are uh, the process of building a wall to separate us from the riverfront road uh -huh. gave us an empty space which we have created into the minali sarabhai gallery which is not going to be your traditional gallery where you hang things on the wall is going to be an interactive space where okay. where we will weave in things where audiences can come in and have an experience that is immersive so for okay. instance you know the gender is very much on my agenda so we one of the first things we want to do is of course to have a celebration of amma's life as an interactive uh, thing again but we want to for instance create a one hour immersive experience for five year old children that at the end of it they will think of gender roles differently oh. so we will invite schools to bring their children for a one hour experience and then we will actually give a, a study booklet to the teacher so that she can continue on that path so we are planning lots and lots oh, of no, things no, which no, will no. unfold slowly so the tradition of uh, linking art with society continues oh very much That's so more so, so i think more and so and there cannot be a better tribute to amma Absolutely. than this i am i i look forward to the future with excitement i am glad <laughs> and maybe see you very frequently surely i hope i would be able to make it every night so malika i i literally feel excited i am glad um, every evening there is going to be something new packed with creative energy absolutely um, and uh, that the space is beautiful the air is inviting you know at the same time the performances that are that you talked of i do feel that amdabad would have an opportunity here all small and big artists of amdabad uh, should take an advantage of this because being an artist does not mean working in isolation you know it's an evolution and for evolution saying the best the world offers in the in art you know has to be has to be seen so i invite all people from amdabad particularly artists to get exposed to these performances and learn a lot and give a new shape to their own performances see you all here let's celebrate together <laughs>